So it's about 7.45 in the morning. Slept pretty decently last night. I was a little afraid it would be super cold, but it actually wasn't. I had to get up about 3.30 to use the bathroom as usual and check my thermometer and it was only about 39, 38 degrees. So actually quite pleasant. Uh, the wind died down eventually. That was, I think, most of the cold last night was just the wind. As we were hiking in, we kept asking people who had camped at Island Lake and other places how the mosquitoes were, and they said they were just terrible. And we really didn't have too much of a problem. So I don't know if that was just because of the wind or because we're camping in a spot that's a little less utilized. So, yeah, I think probably the hardest part of my day yesterday was sleeping on the ground. I haven't done that for a while. I used to sleep in my hammock. But... Beautiful morning. Eat my scrambled eggs. Uh, I didn't have the problem sleeping like John did, but I'm used to sleeping on the ground. Uh, boy, I don't know. Just beautiful day here. Can't wait to for today's adventures. So should be fun. Exactly. We're not in a in a rush today. We've got plenty of time to get up there. So I think if we just take our time, should uh, should be a nice day, and hopefully have a beautiful view. Even though we kind of have a beautiful view right now, don't we? Yeah, we do. But a spectacular <laughs> view would be... So we think we're ready. We're going to go give it a shot, hit the trail, and then head up to the top of Fremont Peak. We came across this flat meadowy section and then we're going to head up this direction up to that saddle. This I think is where the work's going to begin. You ready for it? No. <laughs> That's quite a bit of work getting up through that area, but not bad. Um, there's a few spots where it's kind of bouldery and then um, I actually ended up finding a little bit of a trail, as you can see right there. Make my way to the top. We'll see what it looks like on the other side. So right now, it's about 10.25. So I think once I get up to here, I should be able to see down to Tacoma Basin and a few other spots. Then I'll check the altitude see what we're at as well. I'm guessing probably close to 12,000 feet. Whew. I feel the altitude though. It's a thigh burner. rates of what? Higher rated than 11 on my suck scale. Oh man, this is gorgeous. You can't complain about that view. Just about 12,000 feet here at the saddle. So that's the area that we camped last night. We were in that set of rocks right on that other, right above that lake. This is uh, Elephant Rock, or Elephant Peak, whatever they call it. So this is the Tacoma Basin. So I think this is Mistake Lake right there. And then from here, Somehow got to make it up to the top of that good old Fremont Peak. So I'm going to see if I can summit. Chris is going to chill here at the uh, saddle, hold down the fort for us. See how fast I can get up there and get back down. Got a rock scramble basically to the top.
don't know if there's an exact route, but it seems like there's plenty that will work. Just above 13,000 feet right now. About 700 more to go. According to my watch, I'm about 13,624 feet. So, I'm up here. Okay, but, ooh, so close. Just right to the top of this puppy. Whew, that is pretty. So, I think I just have to climb up the top of this ridge behind me and we're there. Awesome. Okay, so I am on the top. Peak. And it's about 12 o'clock. So it may free me some time. I made it here. Let's see what we got down there. Grab the pencil. Probably didn't include a pencil sharpener, but it's good enough. Yeah, so probably that last 500 feet climb was pretty tough. Definitely feeling the elevation at that point. Uh, but man, totally worth it. Not bad. Nice thing about this granite is it's pretty grippy, pretty steep, but I can go straight down it, which saves me some time on switchbacks. So I'm pretty much back down to the saddle. It's about a quarter after one. So a little under an hour, maybe like 50 minutes to get down Whew. but you know just as much work as going up just different uh, strain on different body parts my knees are feeling it I debated whether I should take my trekking poles up with me 
Um, they did kind of get in the way a little bit as I, as I was scrambling, but not terribly. But I'm super glad I had them on the way down. They were a lifesaver to take some of the strain off my knees. Oh, well, we've made it back to our camp. Home sweet home for the evening. It was about 20 to three, so we made pretty good time. We're here about the same time we showed up yesterday. It was a lot of work to get up to that saddle. But man, once you're up there, just views for days. It was just amazing. So I didn't feel like going up to Fremont because my legs are just dying. And I figured I'd probably get hurt coming up or going down. And I knew John was feeling good. So I just told him, go up, have fun. And I just sat there and tried to take a little siesta and just took in the views. I loved it. So good day. Ooh, so I just got done taking a little swim in a little lake that's just right near our camp's, camp spot. Glacier fed. You could see the snow in the background, but it felt good to wash 20 miles of stench off me. We're going to put on probably do dinner here in the next half hour and maybe a rematch on cribbage, Chris? Okay, rematch on cribbage. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Chris has chosen to dine on spaghetti. I've chosen some shepherd's pie for myself. And then of course we're gonna top this off with a choc dark chocolate? Yeah. Dark chocolate Probably. cheesecake for dessert. Looking forward to that. See when it's got olive oil with it. One and a half cups of water. It smells good. It does smell good. All right, backpackers pantry shepherd's pie. I give that an 11 out of 10. That was awesome. That was probably my favorite dehydrated meal of all time. We're at the uh, cutoff. This takes us the photographer's point bypass, I guess what you might call it, cutoff or whatever. So we're gonna do a little experiment. Right now it is just about seven minutes before one o'clock. So I'm gonna go photographer's point and then we'll meet up at that other junction. We'll see how much time it actually saves. So. Here we go. 
took me just under uh, about 14 minutes to get from that other trail to photographer's point. So now we'll see how long it takes me to get from photographer's point to that original cutoff. All right, so we met back up. Yep. So it took me seven minutes and 24 oh, seconds. It took me about eight minutes from photographer's point to that. Yeah. So yeah, so it only saves about seven or eight minutes. Not as much as we thought. Not as much as we thought, but you know, a little bit. Chris is a man on the mission. He's all the way up there. I can barely keep up with him. He's got those long legs, a Sasquatch stride. And I'm walking with my little hobbit stubs. So, whew, almost there. All right, Chris, what's our mileage? Oh, How many we got left? I don't know, maybe 200 yards. Awesome. <laughs> 200 feet when we hit this pole, all right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, that was a successful trip, I think. Yep, that was awesome. Good way to spend uh, three days, for sure. Happy so. to see the parking lot. Yes, definitely happy. So, and it's, Five. Yeah, we made good time. We did pretty decently on our way out. So, shower. Shower, then the brew, brew pub. Brew pub and burger and tater tot time. Yeah. Then I think we should hit sweet cream and get some uh, Ooh, get ice some cream. cream, I agree. Salted caramel. So, yeah, I might go with huckleberry or chocolate Belgium or both, mm. who knows. Can't, so. can't go wrong, actually. Yeah. Nope. This is really good. Oh. So. Oh. All right, you got the gas? Take two. Okay, two. have fun. <laughs> That's yeah, that guy is probably a mile up the trail and realized he didn't have enough fuel for his stove, so he uh -oh. ran out. Wow. Grabbed it, has to run back up. So. Well, power to him. <laughs>